Hey guys, welcome to part four, I believe, of the mean stack front to back series. In the last video, we set up our user model and we also added the registration functionality for the back end. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to be able to authenticate and we also want to get our token system working and, and make it so that we can protect certain routes. So we're going to use Passport. So in our app.js file, we need to add a couple lines of middleware. I'm going to go right down here below the body parser. And let's say Passport middleware. And it's going to be app.use. And in here, we're going to pass in uh, Passport.initialize. Then we need another line. And that's going to be Passport session okay you just need to have those two lines so oh, and that should be a function so let's save that all right now what we're gonna do is create a strategy so we're using passport JWT passport has a, a ton of different strategies you can use um, I do have a series where we use the local strategy which is similar to what we're doing except there's no token involved um, but with this, what we're going to have to do is create a config file with code similar to this right here. So we're bringing in the strategy with passport JWT dot strategy. And we also need this extract JWT utility. And then we're creating our options right here. Okay, so basically we're, we're saying we want to extract it from the header, from the authorization from the header. That's how it actually fetches the, um, the token. And then we're saying we want to use a new JWT strategy, pass in the options, then we get a callback, okay? And in that callback, we get a payload. And that payload should include the user information. Now, when I did this right here, JWT payload.sub, I wasn't getting anything. I actually had to do dot underscore ID. So we may need to experiment a little with this and actually see what's in the payload and get the ID. Now right here they're using directly the find one mongoose function and I don't want to do that I want to keep all that stuff inside the model so we're going to call our um, get user by ID function that we created in the model and then we'll just pass in the ID not an object all right and then this stuff will all be the same basically if there's an error we return done and we're going to pass along false and then if there is a user we're going to pass along the user if it, if it doesn't match the user, we'll pass along false. Okay, so let's go ahead and go in the config folder. We'll create a file called passport.js. And let's see, in here we want to bring in a bunch of stuff. We're going to bring in the JWT uh, strategy. So we want to set that to require passport jwt dot strategy we also want to bring in the extract jwt okay that's also from passport and it's going to be dot extract jwt let's also bring in our model so we'll say const user And that's going to come from uh, dot dot slash models slash user. And then we also want our config, our database config. Okay, so we'll set that to require. And this is going to be dot dot slash config slash database. Okay, so those are the requires. And then we're going to say module dot exports because we want this to be accessible. And we're going to set it to a function. And we're just going to pass in here. Hey guys, welcome Passport. to part three of the mean stack. All right, so now we want to start to create our options. We'll say let ops equals an empty object. And then let's add to it. We'll say ops dot JWT from request. And we're going to set that to that extract JWT dot from auth header. Okay, because there's different ways that you can pass the token back and forth. We're using the authorization in the header. All right, then we need to add our key. So it's ops.secret 
or key. And that's going to be set to the key that's in our config. So key.secret. Okay, then we're going to do passport.use. And we want to say uh, new JWT strategy. And then pass in the options. And then a callback. Okay, and then this callback is going to uh, give us the payload. So JWT payload. And then done. All right, and then right here we want to call our model function get user by ID. And let's see, we're going to pass in JWT payload, and I'm going to do dot underscore ID because that's what worked for me last time. If it doesn't, then we'll just do, we'll have to do a little debugging. Okay, oh, I'm going to use an arrow function here. Okay, and that's going to give us an error, possible error, and a user. So now we want to check to see if there's an error. So if there is, then we want to return done along with the error and false. And then we want to check for the user. Okay, if the user was returned, then we want to return done. We'll set null for the error and then for, um, user. Okay, we want to pass him along if he's found. If not, then we're going to just return done. Null for the error, but false here. All right, and that should do it. So let's save that. Now we want to make sure we include this inside of our app.js. So down below where we initialize passport, let's say require uh, dot slash config slash passport. And then we just want to go like this, another parentheses and passport. Okay, because we're passing that in. So let's save that, make sure we don't have any weird errors. Okay, looks like we don't. Um, now what we want to do is go to, let's see, we want to go to our routes, and we want to start to work on the authenticate. Okay, so we're getting a post request to slash authenticate, and the very first thing we want to do here is get the username and password that's being submitted. So we'll do const username, We'll get that from request.body.username. Okay, it's coming in from the form. And then the password, or the possible password. All right, and then what we want to do is we want to get the user by the username. So we already have that function created. So get user by username. And that's going to obviously get passed in the username, and then it's going to get a callback. Okay, so this is going to take error, possible error, and the user. So if there's an error, then let's just do throw error. And if there's not, we're going to check for the user. So first we're going to say if there's not a user returned, if there's not a user return, then we want to send our response to the to the client. So return res.json. And we're going to send success false. And also a message, just like we did with the red uh, registration. False, comma, message. And we'll say uh, user not found. Okay, because there's no user. Now, if there is a user, then we're going to keep going and we're going to check the password. So we'll say user dot, and we're going to have a function inside of our model called compare password. Okay, and that's going to take in uh, the, the actual or the, the password that the user is entering in the form, 
and then the actual hashed password which we can get from the user that was that was sent back to us so we can get it with user dot password all right and then we have our callback and this will have an error and then is match which should be a boolean to tell us if the password matches or not all right so uh, let's go ahead and test for the error and then we'll just throw error and if there's no error then we want to test for the is match so we'll do if is match then we're going to create our token okay so const token and we can get this with jwt dot sign and in here we want to pass in the user uh, and then our secret which is in the config file so config dot secret and then an object with any options we want so it has an option called expires in so you can set this to whatever you want in seconds you can make it so that uh, the user will have to log in every half hour or, or whatever I'm gonna actually put it to a week so I'm gonna say 604 800 okay I looked that up and I think that's supposed to be a week worth of seconds okay um, and then we want to go under that and then our response to the front end so the response is going to include success true because it worked they validated and then we also want to send along the token back okay so we'll say token and we're going to prefix it with JWT space and then concatenate token all right, and I also want to send the user data. So we're going to create an object here to send back, which will have an ID. And we'll set that to user dot underscore ID. Now remember, this user was given back to us. Um, where is it? Up here, okay, when we did the get user by username. So that's the user in the database. Now the only reason I don't send it like that, like just send it as users, because I don't want to send the password. So we're just building our own object here to send. So ID name user dot name username and email. And you can choose what you want to send back. I'm just sending back the whole thing basically besides the password. Um, that way they can have some profile data, you know. So uh, let's see if is match ends right here so we want to say else so if there's no match then what do we want to do we just want to send a response like this so success false and then we'll just say um, wrong password okay so we're checking for the username if it ex if it exists then we're gonna match the password if that matches we're gonna go on to send this response if it doesn't we're gonna send this response so now what we need to do is create this compare password function inside of our model so let's go to models user JS and let's go down to the bottom here module dot exports dot compare password Okay, and let's see, this is going to take in, uh, if we look at it, what we just did in the routes, it takes in the password that the user types, which is the candidate password, then the actual hash, and then the callback. Okay, so that's what we need to add in here. Candidate password hash callback. And this callback. Uh, let's see. Oh no, we don't do that here. We already did that. We just got to do callback. Okay, and then inside here we need to run bcrypt dot compare. Now a lot of times you'll see that you'll see developers use this outside in the routes 
use this out in the routes and I don't like that I want to keep everything encapsulated so that's why I'm doing it this way so that's going to take in again the candidate password the hash and then we put a call back here okay and then that's going to be error is match check for the error and then our callback pass in null and is match alright and that should do it so let's save that now that was quite a bit of code we just wrote so I will be surprised if it works on the first shot but hopefully it does okay so our server is up and running now let's go to postman and we already registered a user John so now what we want to do is open another tab make a post request to localhost 3000 slash users slash authenticate and let's see we're gonna do headers let's add the content type I'm gonna submit it as application slash JSON and then the body we'll choose raw and let's say username John password okay moment of truth let's go ahead and send and nothing <laughs> alright let's take a look over here config is not defined so this is routes users and let's see it's looking at this right here config is not defined and they're right so we just need to bring that in Wire. Let's see, it's going to be dot dot slash config slash database. All right. I'll be happy if that's the only problem. Let's try again. And there we go. Look at that. Success true. Token, which starts with JWT and then has our token. And it gives us all the user information. So that's a successful request. So what we would do on the client side in Angular 2, or whatever you're using, you would store this token and this user inside of your either cookies or local storage. It's up to you how you want to store it. We're going to use local storage. Uh, and then when you want to make a request to a protected route, you have to include that token within the header. Okay, and we'll, I'll show you how to do all that in Angular 2. But let's test it out here. We can actually test it out. Um, let's open up another tab and before we do it we have to protect a route so let's take this profile route and protect it so the way that we do that uh, we have to add right here as a second parameter we're going to say passport dot authenticate and let's see we're going to pass in JWT and then we just want to set an options object here and just say session false because we're not using the session. And then I think that's it. That should protect it. So any route that you want to protect, you just put this in as a second parameter. All right. Now for the response, let's say res.json and let's get them the profile data. So we'll send a user and we can get that user with request dot user alright so let's save that and then what we want to do is grab the token that was sent to us okay in in a real application this would be stored in your um, local storage or something but I can't, oh, I can't copy it I have to go to raw so make sure you, you grab from the, the JWT all the way to the end here and copy and then let's open up another route here it's going to be a get request and it's going to go to localhost 3000 slash users slash profile now let's first try it without the key and see that we get unauthorized so not just anybody can go to this now 
to include it, we just need to go to headers and we're going to add authorization and paste in that value. Once we do that, let's send. We still got unauthorized. Oh man. Uh, why did that happen? Hmm. Authorization. Users profile. See, that should have worked. Something must have, have gone wrong here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video because I really don't want to start this over. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to check it out, and I'll be back. All right, guys. So I'm going to try to explain what's going on here. So when we submit this, uh, this request, it's going through our JWT strategy, right? So if we look at our Passport.js, which is in the config folder, it's, it's running this right here when we submit that, okay? Now, if we go inside this function right here and we say console.log, and let's take a look at what this payload is giving us. Okay, so I'll paste that in. And then let's go and make that request. Still get authorized, but if we look in the console, this is what that payload is giving us. Um, now I have right here payload dot underscore ID, so that's not being found. Um, the way that we can access it is in this underscore doc and then underscore ID, and it's I don't think it's supposed to work like that. I think that there's some kind of bug. Now it had us doing. If you remember from that documentation, it had us doing dot sub, and I just looked at that, and that's undefined. So what we're going to try here is underscore doc dot underscore id. All right, and just try this out. See what you get for the payload, because depending on what version you're using of um, Passport JWT, this may have changed. You just want to make sure that you have the user ID in this field from the payload basically so let's go ahead and save that and then we'll go back over here and let's do a send and there we go now it works okay because it got the correct ID for that token and it gave us uh, our user information okay so that's how you can protect routes you authenticate you get the token you store it and then you use it for any routes that are protected such as this profile one okay so our back end is now complete at least for now until we you know move on later later on down the line uh, but the next video we do will be on our front end we'll start to create our angular 2 website our application alright so hopefully you guys could follow along with this uh, I really hope that I explained it well enough and I promise it won't be a month before the next video um, I wanted to bang out the whole back end today and um, it may be a couple days or so but We'll get it up soon, all right? So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.